Welcome back. I'm very excited to introduce you to a dear friend who I am just now meeting for the first time in person, thanks to the online and social media world. Karen Glasser is here to talk to us about her creation of the Little White Lie Network. Karen, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. We are so excited. So you have a background in stage and music and geeky business computer stuff. <laughs> Give us a little bit of your background and what brought you to The Little White Lie. Well, we can go back about 30 years when I, um, I was singing. Mm -hmm. I've sung at Carnegie Hall. Oh, wow. So it's kind of cool. Wow. Yeah. Children, what what oh, type of? Children's artist. I'm, I was with Rhino Records, and mm -hmm. so I recorded um, self-esteem songs and things like that. Wow. And I was, you know, at the time, it wasn't, I didn't realize how cool that was, yeah, actually. Yeah, very cool. But it was very cool. And then fast forward, I ended up becoming a cantor um, in a synagogue, uh, mm -hmm. which I was there for about 16 years. And I like to say I married and buried. <laughs> um, and then I moved up to Northern California and, and really embraced my geek side okay. and mm -hmm. started dealing with with uh, live streaming and things to do on the on the computer basically mm -hmm. and then last November or a year ago November uh, when I turned 60 I said you know what I've been coloring my hair for 30 years every three weeks and I did that because my mom went white when she was 30 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I had been told that you shouldn't have white hair at 30 you won't get a job mm -hmm. We've all been told that, yes. actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's one of those little white lies. Yeah. And then I realized if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to do it in front of the camera. And that is how the little white lie was born. Mm -hmm. And it started with me just getting on camera and being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And saying, I'm going to do this. And at the beginning of every show, I'd say, OK, it's time for the reveal. And I would put my head down like this. That's right. <laughs> I used to look forward to that. <laughs> As the roots As started growing. As the roots growing. started to grow out. And my hair grows really fast. So this, uh -huh. I mean, I'm almost grown out at this point, yes. and it's about a year and several months at that point. And as I started doing this, um, I realized that it was really, it's not just about my hair. I sure. mean, it's not about my right. hair. But it, when we get older, at any age, we start telling ourselves lies. We start mm -hmm. telling ourselves that we can't wear a certain thing, mm -hmm. or we're supposed to dress a certain way, or if you have white hair, you won't get hired, or I'm too old to learn technology. There's mm -hmm. so many things that we lie to ourselves about. And so I started bringing it on guests. And that's why, Lauren, you came on yeah. and we talked about image and style and, and, and mm -hmm. what the media tells us. Mm -hmm. You know, as mm -hmm. my son likes to say, there is no me the media, but right. what we're told mm -hmm. to do. And it's just kind of evolved. We have now an average of 10,000 plus viewers on any given show. Wow. That's amazing. It, that is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And you've actually shifted it. Now you have an electronic magazine. Yes, and so out of that whole year-long thing, and it continues, by the way, I continue mm -hmm. to do the shows, a magazine was born. It's, it's called the Little White Lie uh, Digital Magazine. And that, as of right now, has had over 113,000 views wow. on this magazine. Wow. And what we did, because I'm about working smarter, not harder, mm -hmm. so I took some of the interviews that I had done, and we put those interviews in the magazine, in the digital magazine, Smart. a live show. So they could literally click in the magazine and watch the show. Mm. That's great. It was very cool. That is very cool. And it is very tech savvy. So <laughs> it's actually combining <laughs> it's everything combining that you've ever done. It, it really mm -hmm. is. And I like to say, you know, when, when people say to me, well, I'm too old to learn this. And mm -hmm. it's like, no, I, I do it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, a, it's just a new set of skills that, mm -hmm. that you learn. But That's I all. think there's a bigger conversation. And it's the one that you actually brought to the fore with The Little White Lie is about being authentic, about mm -hmm. continuing to move forward, right. about living into your next yes. dream what does yes. that look like so you're you're all about that <laughs> I'm all about that so you know here we are now fast forward a year and a couple of months of the little white lie and because I am a geek I had been brought on by a company about a year ago to do social media and some marketing and things like that and somewhere along the line I started running the company <laughs> and I was she's clearly not <laughs> too old because to run the company. Apparently, I'm not too old to run the company. And they asked if I would move down to where the offices were mm -hmm. in Escondido and become the COO. The company's name is HempSmart.com. Mm -hmm. It's a hemp company, which I really love because of what it has to do with. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of a, a groundswell that's going mm -hmm. on not just here in California, but all across the country and all around the world. Yeah. But it was a huge decision because I lived in Napa. Mm -hmm. I lived in probably who leaves who paradise. Leaves paradise. Yeah. But I thought, you know what? Who gets an opportunity like this? And my husband had just retired, and he said, you need to go for this. And so I had wow. his support, and we packed up, and in one month's time, sold our house, bought a house, 
moved out and moved into a house literally in 30 days. Wow. I just moved here. That's <laughs> literally. Well, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> We're so glad to have you. Hi, and we I have love it. First stop, Good Day Orange County. Oh How cool is that? Seriously? I'm delighted. Yeah. You know, yeah. it is always so fun to meet such dynamic people that we meet yeah. on this show. And, you know, you are just like, you personify that <laughs> spirit of like, you know, like resilience and go get them and, you know, the, what we all aspire to be. So I think yeah. it's really amazing. And you know what? I, I actually would be the first one to say that this may not be the last thing I do. Mm -hmm. And, and that is, that's part of the whole little white lie that you can't close yourself off to mm -hmm. what may be your next, 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 right. whatever mm -hmm. that is. Keep an open mind. It may mm -hmm. just be the perfect fit. Oh, I agree. You know? I mean, seven years ago when I moved from the East Coast, I never thought I would ever leave New York. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, if you're from New York, you're from New York. Right. <laughs> right. And all of a sudden, I'm from California. And yeah. you know what? I'm from California. You are, you are a California girl. <laughs> I really am, it in is. my own little way. That's right. And, and then, of course, the whole thing it, that happened for us at about the same time mm -hmm. about the, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to run after my hair. Right. I don't want it to be about my hair. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and letting that vulnerability come out, it makes you ask questions. It does. And the other thing that it did for me, which was really interesting because I had no way of knowing it would do that, when I became vulnerable, I became real mm. to so many people because up until that point, I sang at Carnegie Hall. I was on a stage. I was the cantor. I was the one who mm -hmm. was on that, that, that podium. Right. Now I was being me. I was being just a regular human being mm -hmm. saying, you know, I'm feeling, I went to Las Vegas. I was feeling invisible. How about you? And they, people started commenting mm -hmm. and people started saying, yeah, me too. So mm -hmm. my vulnerability made me even more, um, I, they liked me even more. You're really approachable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are. I think that, you know, it's interesting that you say that because like sometimes when we have big challenges in our lives, it seems like the world is ending, but then you find out that it actually right, yeah. helps you relate to other people. You know, like I had a friend call me yesterday and tell me about some like marriage problems that she's having. And she's like, you probably can relate to that. And I'm like, yeah, I've actually had a failed one. Yours hasn't <laughs> failed. So <laughs> you're doing better than I did, you know? And so it's like, it's all of a sudden, you know, like you, you're, Challenges bring so much perspective and so much. Right. Um, I, I don't. I want. I don't want to say I'm wise in any way, but I do have that experience behind me, and so right. you kind of. You know, I love what you're doing with the little white lie because Thank it you, does yeah. make you vulnerable, and people yeah. can learn from your wisdom because you are approachable. And also, I'm getting used to being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Joey Garrity, says if you're not uncomfortable you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. you, you need to be uncomfortable to be able to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I always, everything that I, decision that I make, I put it under this particular framework. What's the worst case scenario? Mm -hmm. And can I live with it? Mm -hmm. So if I can't, if I can't live with the very worst case scenario, mm -hmm. then it's not a risk I'm willing to take. Mm -hmm. But if I can live, so if this job were to go away tomorrow, all right. It's okay. Escondido's yeah. not a bad it's place. It's not a bad place, and I'm much closer to my mom and dad. Yeah. And that's so, great. And that was the other, you know, really mm -hmm. motivating factor as well. You know, that, that's actually my mom's philosophy as well, is like she takes the worst case scenario mm -hmm. and she goes, can I live with that? Yeah. yeah. And she bases her decisions on that, and she's always taught me to do that as well, yeah. which I think is like, I think it's actually really freeing. And some, might, some people might think that's kind of pessimistic, but I think it's actually very freeing because yeah. you can say, that's, that's an acceptable you know, right, yeah. ground Either zero way. for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Either way, how bad can it be? What What's the upside? Yeah. I've always looked at what's the upside, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then where's the bottom fallout? Mm -hmm. And helps you make I mean, those. That's how I make rate. those decisions. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. So, so, what are some of the other lies that have been divulged to you? Because I know we all have our own different. Retirement stories. is a big one. Mm -hmm. That we work, 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 and then we're supposed to retire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. Why exactly? My husband's a perfect example. He retired at 72. He worked for Napa State Hospital with the criminally insane, and he retired, and he's now going back to work. Sure. Mm -hmm. He's going to do telepsychiatry because he can't. He said, what am I supposed to do for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. Sit around, you know, eating bonbons or golfing? I don't like golf. So uh, retirement is a huge one, mm -hmm. is that somehow we were, le we were told that you have to work till you retire. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, no. My dad worked until he was 82. Yeah. And it was only a health issue that we said, mm -hmm. you know, maybe 
you could go do other things. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have to stop, but but having to run a business and manage a right. business, the stress of the business, let's do something else. Let's do something else. And that's where the whole, mm -hmm. that word retirement, I think, is being rephrased. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. And I like what you were saying, too. Do something else. Don't retire. Right. right. Just change your life. Redirect. Change your, redirect. Exactly. Like and the other big thing is image and, and mm -hmm. style. I mean, that that's big. I can go Google right now on mm -hmm. online. Um, what not to wear after 40. I know. Well, oh. and, uh, those headlines make me nuts. Other, and how many, I mean, a gazillion, a gazillion articles that basically say the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're supposed to do something at 40. Right. And I say, forget that. I mean, yeah. look at um, Boom Cosmetics. Um, mm -hmm. I'm drawing a blank on her name. But she she was a, a makeup artist. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And she at 40, Cindy, Johnson, Cindy, Cindy Joseph, Joseph, Cindy Joseph. Mm -hmm. And at, uh, she's going to be in my show. Oh, is she? Yeah. And at um, 48, she decided she was going to stop coloring her hair. Mm -hmm. And she let her hair go out. And she's a makeup artist, top, model, top models. She was walking down the road in New York. And an uh, uh, agent stopped her from Dolce & Gabbana. And they said, would you like to be a model? She's she now models for them. She became their model. What? <laughs> With gray hair. Yeah, I, I have story. another I have another friend who um, Tara Shannon, who in the 70s, if you go Google her name, you're going to say, oh my gosh, I remember seeing her on the cover of Vogue mm -hmm. and on Cosmopolitan, and she ran, did the runways. She is now 61 years old, and she said she's considering dyeing her hair gray because they are uh, they're on a road to hiring gray model only yeah. gray models. If yeah. you look at commercial it's very it's much in vogue right now wow. and they need diversity and they think gray hair is the signal to diversity right in fact you have a lot of prematurely gray I mean my mom started to gray at 15 she could have done it been a hair if, the, if it was right. in vogue then yeah. right she could have been a hair model at right. 20 mm -hmm. exactly but she would have been placed in the exactly. older model yeah. category which exactly. is just crazy it is crazy so that's the, I mean that's huge the whole image thing what you're supposed to wear what you're not supposed to wear your hair is supposed to be a certain color you can't wear makeup after a certain age I think you look marvelous you Thank you. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. And I've never bought that don't wear makeup after a certain age. No. no. But I but I am careful about what because yes, yes your skin changes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it yes, the product is. formulations, mm -hmm. you know, there are better things to do at different times. Right. But that's true always. It's mm -hmm. always true. And I've never been a huge makeup girl anyway, mm -hmm. so I haven't really changed anything except that I put lipstick on now as I chew it off because that's because when I'm on camera all the time, yeah. you you disappear and yeah. you have to put something it does on. Brighten you up a bit. But I don't I, you know, I don't buy into you have to, you should, you would, why didn't you, you know, all of that kind of thing. It's it's the stuff that I put on myself. I went to Las Vegas early on when I was doing this and I used to go to Vegas all the time with my dre little short dresses and my high heels and the whole thing and here's my hair growing out and I thought, I don't belong here anymore. And that was the turning point for me. Mm. That was a total turning point for me. I did a show on it and, I, and I, that was when I got really down and vulnerable. Mm. I said, I felt invisible. I felt like I didn't belong in any of this anymore and you know what? I'm going to wear that sexy red dress again. And in fact, I went on a cruise a month later, took a picture of myself in my sexy little red dress, and put it up online and said, here. It, it was fabulous. You know, it's just, it it, it's, it's confidence. I mm -hmm. think it's confidence, and mm -hmm. I think that when, no matter what age we are, yeah. when we get confident, we just keep there's going. nothing we can't do. That's so where awesome. can we find you? You can find me at The Little White Lie online, and actually all the shows live there. That's my website. Or you can find me on Facebook and watch it live when we do the shows okay. at The Little White Lie Digital Network. The Little White Lie Digital Network or thelittlewhitelie.com. Correct. Perfect. We'll put those up on the Great. screen. Thank and you. Thank you so much for being with us, Karen. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back.